Let us learn about number classes. What number classes are? Usually when we work with number classes, we work with primitive data types. What are primitive data types? These are nothing but int, long, float and so on. But a number class says that all these primitive data types needs to be wrapped. What do you understand by this wrapping? See these primitive data types have a fixed size or fixed value. But there are cases where you may not know the value of these primitive data types. In those situations, what can you do? Where do you store the value? Do you store the value in stack or do you store the value in heap? Normally the value of these primitive data types are stored in stack. That is nothing but when you have the fixed value, when you know the integer value is so and so, you can go and store the value in stack. But in cases where you do not know the value, what do you do in those cases? In those cases, you store the reference in the stack and the value in the heap. Where in the heap, it stores the dynamic value. That is, it stores your value at runtime. In those cases, you need certain wrapping. So, a Java platform provides you wrapping classes for this particular reason. That is, where you wrap each of your primitive data types that is where you convert your each of the primitive data types into object that is you convert your primitive data types into a reference type and this process is called as auto boxing and when you move again back from object to your primitive data value when you exactly get the value or when you reverse the process that is called unboxing and this both are done by the compiler itself we will not are or we are not needed to call this boxing or auto boxing and unboxing method explicitly they are done by themselves so here is an example where you store the value of int x equal to 5 but this value you may not know you may store at the runtime that is you are just storing the reference so the conversion or the auto boxing is here you write it into int you are auto boxing to integer type and then when you are moving the value when you are storing the value back or you are, when you are performing certain operations that is nothing but you are unboxing the value. So these are the few math functions where you can perform on the numbers and these are few where if you want to find whether the value is equal to so and so number where you are trying to compare the value of 2 where you are performing certain mathematical functions like the seal value, floor value, where you are trying to find out the random number, the exponential, whether which one is the minimum number, the maximum number and then if you want the value of sine cos stand for that particular number or not. So these are the few methods. So let us see with the help of an example how a number object is created and how do they function. In this case, we have created a class called number class and under the main method, we will be running all this where we have created four variables, first being of an integer type value 5, then integer y as 10, then double and float. So we have created certain variables. Now what each of them does, let us see. In the first one, which is a simple output method, print ln method, where we are trying to display the value of x, where this is auto boxing you are not writing int x equal to 5 if you know the value write int where you may not know so you are storing the reference and then you are printing that value then you are checking if x is equal to y or not and then you compare the x value with 3 then if you want to perform certain mathematical functions like seal flow which is nothing but which provides you the round value that is nothing but you want to provide the seal value for your double and flow value for your float the next it says that this is important that we need to keep an eye it says the value of e that is nothing but exponential is in the brackets comma math dot e i shall discuss what is this later but what is math dot e because we are performing mathematical functions over the seal floor and all because all these are mathematical functions we use the keyword math math dot whatever method or the function you want to perform here we are trying to perform e that is we are trying to find out the exponential value of math which is nothing but has a fixed value 2.7 and so on so we are trying to retrieve that value and display now when you want to display this value you want to say after dot or after decimal i want these many decimals 1 2 3 4 to be displayed so in that case you need to provide what kind of a value will it return it is returning 
float value and that will be written under your percentile symbol so you write percentage dot f that is dot f that is you are providing the floating point f but dot 4 f the 4 indicates that please display the value or please display the value with 4 decimal integers so if it is 2.7123 so and so number it will display and then it is a number so you need to open and close with your the same percentile so you write percentile dot 4 f and then percentile the next line then again you say you want to find out the square root of your integer x right so if you want to find out the square root of your integer x what is this we are saying please display the square root and the square root value is this right so it will display file is percentile again dot 3 f because it is a floating value you write f if it was normal integer you do not have to write f so because being a floating value you write f and dot 3 is nothing but three decimals that is the square root so and so it will be 1.234 that is 234 is your three decimals so whatever the value it will provide you three decimal places then you need to find out what is the random value so these are the few mathematical functions or the number functions that we are performing because in these cases we do not know the value right we do not know the exact value of our exponential or random the seal and all so in those cases where we are trying to store the reference and then we are trying to pull the value from heap and then provide you the output so in these cases we need to wrap our integer or the primitive values into their wrapper classes so for int it is a integer right so let us execute this program practically to understand in detail in this example we are trying to see what a number class is all about and how its function operates so in this class number class we have created certain variables integer x integer y double d and float f with certain values let us see each of the operation the first statement where we are trying to print the x value so it shall print simple the x value which is an integer 5 in the second statement we see if x dot equals y where we see if the number object equals to the argument or not and this will return the boolean value so is 5 equal to 10 no so it should return false in the next statement we try printing x dot compared to 3 it's much or more like equals but this will return the value in a binary format if x is uh, equal to uh, 3 then it will return as 0 if x is not equal to 3 it will return as 1 in the next statement we are trying to provide the ceiling value for the value d variable which is minus 100.675 so it should return to the greatest value to it and in the next we are trying to retrieve the value for math.float that is for the floating point f minus 90 which should provide the smallest value in the next statement it says math.min x or y which is the minimum value x or y so to write any of the function or any of the statement with math we need to first use the keyword math dot whether it is min or whether it is float whether it is ceiling whether you want to find out the tan value or the cost value so everything will follow as math dot min math dot cost math dot floor and all if it is a single value you'll provide one argument if you have a comparison value then you would provide in a bracket with the help of a comma x comma y so which is the minimum value x with the hold of 5 next we say print f the value of e is so and so will come last to this first let us see the next statement which is system dot out dot print ln math dot random this random is nothing but it uh, will display any of the random number now what does this printf stands for generally in java we use print or print ln to print any of the string but we have an enhanced feature that allows us to print the data more likely and that can be print format or format so instead of print we can use the keyword format and instead of the word print ln we can use print f 
that helps us printing the data better and have a better control over the prints. Now, how do you print that? You print in a string, comma, the value. Now, math.e value to be printed. E value is generally 2.7 and so on. So, now this 2.7 is what kind of a data type? Is it an integer? Integer generally stores one bit. But float allows you to store decimal value. So, it is 2.7 which is a decimal value. I Now, in order to store the decimal value and then print, the value that we get will be in a float format. So, we print in a float format. And to write that, what we do is that you need to provide modulus both the sides and after that you provide n. In between of modulus, you need to write what kind of a data or what kind of a value will retrieve that is dot f which is nothing but floating point if you see this is how you declare the floating value 90 dot 20 f which is a floating point so dot f but after dot how many decimals or how many numbers do you want to print that you need to decide for example i make it as 2 therefore the value would be 2.7 and so on with one more number let us save this file and execute. If you see here, the value of A is 2.72. Let us just change the number to 4 and check the value. Now, the number has changed to 2.7183, which is nothing but 4 decimal points that you need. 